Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics and that's leadership. And I want you to know that none of us have to stay the same. Like every single one of us as leaders can continue to fill ourselves up with the wisdom of God and, uh, and really expand our, our knowledge of how do we lead, uh, not just lead through, through intellect, but how do I lead from the heart? I think it's so important that we as Christians, as believers, as you work in the workplace, as you uh, lead your family, as you work in ministry or whatever it is that you do, that you're constantly leading from the heart and uh, because we care about people. And the simple definition of leadership is influence. It simply is you having influence over even one person makes you a leader. And so how do we develop this leadership? How do we guard ourselves from not developing toxicity in our heart when it comes to our leadership, but actually creating a healthy environment everywhere we go with leadership? So today, I wanna give you uh, a few points on what uh, healthy le leadership looks like, especially in a environment. Um, number one, I think leaders have to have the spirit of having um, a good idea of problem solving. I think problem solving is something that we lack today, more importantly in our nation. We lack solutions, but a great leader is always looking at the challenges that we face and we're always finding ways to solve them. And there's no one way to solve every problem, but I believe that as you expand your leadership and your wisdom of God, I think there's so much wisdom nuggets in the Bible. I think the best leadership book that you can read is the Holy Bible. There's so many great principles on how to lead yourself. Then you can lead others. Then you can lead a nation, etc. So um, problems, I say this because every single organization has a mess. Anywhere you're going to work at, I don't care what field you work in, whether it's in church, whether it's in the entertainment industry, whether it's in uh, the corporate world, it's a messy world. And so when there's a messy world, we have to have problem solvers. And sometimes here's the issue. Sometimes you work with people that we inherit in companies that you didn't ask for, but you still have to work even with those kind of people. But I think being able to have the ability to be a great problem solver, even in relationship, is so key and fundamental. For example, King Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible, he, this guy was always attracting problems, always. And um, all of his circle of influence of the king were people that were not bringing him solutions. As a matter of fact, his problems kept getting worse, but there was a man by the name of Daniel who had the wisdom of God. Look at Daniel chapter one, verse 20 says this. He asked him for advice in matters that required wisdom and understanding. So this is the king asking advice and understanding. And so the king always found their answers to be the best. Other men in his kingdom claimed to get knowledge by using magic, but the answers of Daniel and his friends were 10 times better. And let me tell you something. I think as a leader, when you're a Christ follower, our solution should be 10 times better than the average person who brings an idea to the table. It really should be that way. You know, because Daniel and his three friends, which was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, man, they always got together. They prayed together. They fasted together. They sought God together, and they would always draw wisdom from God. And I love this, that the scripture says they were 10 times better. Come on, as a leader, you should get 10 times better at whatever it is you do. The second thing, as a leader, you have to be a drama dropper. Listen, we gotta be drama droppers. In other words, there's some people that just love drama. They live for drama. They love throwing people under the bus drama. And we have to guard ourselves from being completely consumed with drama. I think that we have a responsibility of avoiding drama, but not avoiding it to the point where you're not addressing it, but avoiding it you as a person. Here's what Proverbs 20 verse three says. It says, avoiding a fight brings honor to a person but every foolish person is quick to argue. Listen, no one gets anywhere with just arguments. We have to come to the place where we say, you know what, my honor is more valuable than this argument with you. The third thing we should have is we should have energy managers. Listen, you have to conserve your energy. You cannot think that you can do all things. I think there's so many 
uh, wonderful people out there who, you know, love leadership, but they have too many pipe dreams. They're expanding their their leadership. They're doing too many things in different places. And I think you have to find your niche or your niche, however they say that word, and really be strong in that place that God has blessed you with. And so you have to manage that energy. You have to conserve that energy. You can't give away what you don't possess. Listen, if you're not conserving that energy, it's going to be hard for you to give life. You have to make sure that you're taking care of that. So um, manage your ener energy uh, so that we all know where we're going. The fourth thing is we have to be atmosphere um, uh, creators or atmosphere fillers. Every time you and I walk in a room, there is tension of something. And I think that as we as leaders become those atmosphere fillers, we can change the atmosphere of the room by our joy, by the hope we bring, by the having the spirit of, uh, of, of, of all things are possible. I think that's the kind of leader that God is looking for. Those people that can come in a room and change the atmosphere of hopelessness, of despair, and we bring joy, peace, and, and longevity. The fifth thing is we need to be strategic think thinkers. Listen, you need three people to touch your spirit. Every single one of us need at least three people to touch our spirit. That means that we're touching our heart. Uh, we're touching the strategy uh, or the plan that God has given us in an organization. I think that we have to have a uh, strategy when it comes to making sure that we're always not just thinking about what we want to execute, but we're thinking about the people that surround us, the people that are on our dream team. I think it's so key as a leader to always make sure that you're touching people. As we're thinking about what we're going to execute, we're thinking about the people we're executing it with. So let's make sure we do that. The seventh thing that we should do is we have to be Jesus lovers. Let me tell you something. The love of God is the only thing that we can do in really showing the world who Jesus is. As a leader, we have to have the love of Christ. We have to love people when they're in their best times, in their good times, but also in their ugly times. So you have to be a lover of Jesus. Um, and then the eighth thing is generous. Be generous with your time. Be generous with your, with your wisdom. Share it. Share the knowledge, man. Knowledge is power, but we got to be generous with that gift. And so let's make sure that as leaders that we're looking to share the, the, the knowledge that we've developed, the, the, the experiences that we have learned so that we can help people not repeat maybe some of the same mistakes that we've made and help them conquer them by our experiences. So that's all I have for you today. Listen, let's lead forward as we lean forward with God. God bless you.